Hey, it's now time once again for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Glad to have you with us uh, on this Wednesday evening. Uh, hope that things have been going a lot better for you. If not, hey, remember, we are a praying church and we'd like to pray for you. Uh, you can always go to fbcwinsboro.com. There's a little form, there's a click, uh, a click, a link that you can click on. There we go. And you can, uh, it takes you to a form you can fill out. So if you'd like for us to pray for you, we would love to. Uh, now you can sign your real name. Uh, you can, now look, we will keep these private. We will not be broadcasting your prayer request. Uh, unless you would like for us to tell the rest of our congregation. Now, if you get there, they will go directly to me. Uh, but if you have a prayer request, let me know. And let me know if you'd like our congregation to pray for you, our church to pray for you. So uh, if you would like that to happen, please do that. Uh, no problem. Just go to fbcwinsboro.com and right on the right-hand side, there'll be a little link and you can click on that. Well, it's time to get down to our devotion and prayer time tonight. I, I have been enjoying these. It's a, it's a joy to be able to bring these to you, uh, to be able to share these with you. Tonight, helping others see God. Does God exist? If people could stop playing with their phones and arguing about masks with their friends, they just might allow themselves, their minds, to wander a little bit and settle and focus on this question, does God exist? In fact, this is one of those questions that people have asked across time. I mean, really, it's one of those questions also that many of us ask when faced with troubled times. Because we have this idea, well, if God existed, he wouldn't let us have all these tough times. <laughs> wow, really? Uh, so some of us, I guess some of us feel that if God does exist, then he would just have everything hunky-dory and we'd always be happy. Uh, well, I, that sounds like heaven, which is not earth. Do you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I, that's another place where we'll be happy with no troubles. It's not here. Well, let's, let's move along with this. I, I think all of us uh, at some point ask and question, is God really here? Is he really here? Uh, for those of us who have asked him to forgive us of our sins, for those of us who are trusting in Christ, we know that he exists. We know that he's present in our lives. We know this. Uh, but what about others who exist and do not know if God does. What about others? What about them? How will they know that God exists? Now, I know that the first answer that you might want to give to me when I ask, how does, do others know that God exists? How will they ever know that he exists? Uh, your answer would probably be to me, well, we've got to tell them. Well, and good deal, good answer. That's a good answer. Uh, but the words we say may be meaningless if we do not first love them. Look, love is a choice. You have to choose to love people. God chose to love you. He chose to to love me. We have got to choose to love other people. We've got to choose. We've got to make that choice. In fact, God encourages us to have love one with another, for another. I mean, God encourages us to love our enemies. He tells us we need to love others. Uh, you know, this, I mean, the Probably one of the biggest reasons why God poured out His love into us through His Holy Spirit is, though, is so that we would care for others and we would tell them about Jesus. Uh, because, look, that love for others has got to be there or we won't care about other people. Does it make sense? I think it does. Um, you know, He gave us that love so that we would care for others. In Paul's first letter to the believers in Thessalonica, we find these words that he, that he wrote. It said, uh, Paul says, Now may our God and Father himself and Jesus our Lord direct our way to you. Now Paul is uh, referring to the fact that uh, Satan had, 
had hindered uh, his return to Thessalonica. He wanted to be with these believers in Thessalonica, but he couldn't. Uh, the devil made it impossible to, for him to be able to go. And in all reality, it was not time. God was in God's timing. Uh, you know, it was just not in God's timing. You know, he was wanting to return to these believers, but it, it was up to God for that to happen. And Paul understood this. Uh, but he continues and he says this, And may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people just as we also do for you. Boy, there's a lot in that. Now, Paul packs a punch. Paul, Paul man, he always, he's, he's good, okay? He, let's just put it that way. Paul is intelligent, and he is very uh, inclusive when he seeks to speak to everyone, uh, and, he, and inclusive in the way that he pulls a lot in, uh, pull, and also pulls in lists. I think I've said that before. Paul's a list maker, uh, and it's kind of nice to have those lists to look at, but Let's look at uh, what he has done here. Uh, he is desiring that these believers increase and abound in love for each other or for one another and for others, for all people. So first, he wants them to increase in love. Now, it's not that they had no love. They do have love, but he wants them to increase that love that they do have. Uh, this increase includes the love that they have for one another and for other people. So look, these are believers. God has poured his love into their hearts. The love is there. Paul says, increase that love. Turn up the volume on it. Turn up the intensity of it toward one another and toward other people. So Paul's like, you know, look, it's time to turn that up. That's important. That, 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 that God's love is expressed and in abundance, okay? He then says he wants their love to abound for one another and for all people. Okay, so we're, he says, look, you need to increase your love for one another and for other people, for all people, but I want you to abound. It needs to be, uh, I want you to abound in love for each other and for other people. What in the world? Abound. What does that mean? We don't use that a lot. We say abundantly, you know. I mean, we may sing a song uh, that talks about abundant life or abundant whatever. Uh, but what does that mean? Abundant. Uh, to abound, actually. Abundant. Uh, abundance, uh, abound. Uh, what does this mean? Abound. It means to present in large numbers or in great quantity. Ah, abound in love. Oh, man. Just when you thought increasing your love for one another and for all people could possibly be minimized. I mean, if you increased your expression of love to one another and to all people just a little, a wee little bit, you might think you're, hey, all good with God. I increased my love. So there, Paul said, we got to do it. We got to do it. That's great. Well, but just when you think you can do that and get away with it and think that's enough for God, guess what? Paul says, mm, he uses the word abound. He uses this word abound. God knows us, doesn't he? He does. He desires that we have love in large quantities for one another and for all people. Oh, man. Just when you thought you could maybe just increase a little bit and get away. Just, just when you thought, well, I'll, I'll smile at one more person a day and I'll be fine. No, no. God doesn't let us get away with that. God says, look, I want you to abound in love. So love in mass quanti quantities from you to other people. That's what God wants. Well, now, my goodness, that's hard. I don't love everyone. I cannot love. I do not love everyone. And all this, pre I can't stand it when these preachers get on loving people. Don't they know people they can't love? Don't they know that's hard? Guess what? We do know it's hard. I know it's hard. I encounter people all the time that are difficult to love. I'll tell you what. I mean, it makes their, just their behavior makes it hard for me to love them. But it's a challenge to me. 
I'm like, ooh, look, I'm not giving up. I'm not walking out. I'm not going to say, well, I just don't love them. They're just too difficult to love. I'm not doing that. Oh, you won't catch me doing that. I seek to love them anyway. Oh, it's hard, but I'm up for a challenge. I'm up for either I'm just an idiot or I'm up for a challenge. I, I like to be challenged to love someone. It's tough. It hard. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Someone who's hard to love, it's hard to love them anyway. But guess what? You know, when you say you can't love someone or you don't love someone, what you're saying is you don't like their personality. What you're saying is you don't like their attitude. They are a human being in need of the love of God. And if we can see them like that, if we can see them as such, as people in need of the love of God, then maybe we can tap into that love that God's placed in our hearts because we have the love to love them with. If we are a child of God, He has placed that love in our hearts. The Bible tells us He poured it into our hearts through, by way of the Holy Spirit. I mean, He did that. Uh, so as people, as a person, they are loved by God. Okay? So, well, Jesus was sent for them too. God looks uh, beyond their personality. He looks beyond their faults. And he looks beyond their attitude. And he loves them. He loves them anyway. That same love of the Father is in us. Look, because God's love has been poured into our hearts, we have the ability to love one another and others. We have the ability to to increase our love for one another and for others. We have that. It's there inside of us. That love is there. All we need to do is exercise it, use it in loving one another and, and, and all people. All right? Look, well, what does it take to love another person? What does it take? How do you get there? What do you do? Let me try to give you some help. Your love for another should not be based on their looks, their attitude, or their personality. I have difficulty with certain looks, certain attitudes, certain personalities. I have difficulty. I'll just admit it to you. It's hard for me to love some people. It is hard. You know, I just walk away sometimes thinking, huh, what a jerk. But then I think, you know what? Blast. You know, God loves them too. He loves them too. And I cannot just walk away totally from them and say, well, I'm just going to write them off. You know, some people have gotten by with that for a long time. They think, well, I'll just write people off and I'll be okay. And all the while, God, through His Holy Spirit, is telling you, you need to love them. They are in need of God's love. They are in need of God's love. And you got to do something. you got to do something. Well, that person needs to know that God loves them. They need to know that God loves them. Hmm. Well, how will they know that? How will they know that God loves them? If you do not tell them, how will they know? Please don't depend on some bumper sticker to tell them that God loves them. Please don't depend on someone else to show them the love of God. Look, if you've had a run-in with them, they've had a run-in with you, they really need to hear it from you because you, if you are a believer, you're a child of God. And they need to see His love coming through you, coming through me. They need to see that. It's desperately important that they see that, especially today in this world. Oh, my goodness. They need that. Do you see how critical it is that we increase our love for one another and for all people? Do you see how critical that is? Look. The difference between heaven and hell, it could truly depend on how we express our love for others. It could truly depend. Their eternal destination could depend on how much we express our love to them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved. We need to so love that we give. Well, what do we give? 
God gave his son Jesus. What do we give? We give Jesus. We give the same thing that God gave. We give Jesus. We give Jesus. We give people the opportunity to accept him as Savior and Lord. That's what we do. That's what we give. When we love the people in this world enough, we will want them to have that opportunity to walk with Jesus. We will desire it in their lives. That's what comes out of loving one another and loving all people. When we truly have a love for people, we will care enough about their soul and we will do something in telling them about Jesus. This loving others is so important. Now, we can run around and tell people about Jesus, but if we do not love them, they will know, they will see, they will understand, and they will not listen. But if we truly care for them and we show our love for them, they will then listen and they will hear it. They will hear the Spirit of Almighty God speaking through our actions and they will know it's true and real. Oh, this world needs it badly today. I don't want to preach, but I'm just saying, this world needs the love of God expressed to it. And we're the ones... We're the ones lined up. We're the ones that are supposed to express his love. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Do you have trouble loving someone? Is there, is there someone you're having trouble loving? Think about them being in need of the love of God. They, they do, you know. They need the love of God. They need to be loved with his love. And you and I have that love. How will you share it with them? How will you share his love with other people? How will you increase your love for one another and for others, for all people? How will you do that? How will you do that? Think about it. Think about it today, please. This is crucial. As Christians, this is who we are. We're to love the people in this world to Jesus. And you and I have that responsibility. Let us not fall down on the job. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for this day. And Lord, I thank you for a successful surgery with Marty Thornton. Lord, we thank you for that surgery. God, continue to give him strength day by day. Father, we thank you for other successes uh, in healing that you have allowed to happen in our world and among our, those that we love. Father, we pray for just continued strength and healing to all those who need it in our community, in our church, and in our world. Lord, we pray for peace. Father, peace in our world and in our nation. God, we co we're coming up on this election, and Lord, we pray that your hand would be visible in what needs to happen in our lives and in our country. And Lord, that we would follow you and we would not get hung up uh, and hung, hung up in a particular party and stuff and this, so that we're worshiping a party. God, you did not call us to worship a political party. You called us to worship you. So Father, help us to do that. Please, dear God. Lord, we pray for our, uh, our community and our teachers, Lord, we continue to pray for them and that you would give them strength every day. God, some of them feel like they just, they just want to give up. And they, they can't teach like they want to teach because things are different now and it's difficult. And they, they don't want to lower the bar. They feel like they're not doing their job if they make concessions. God, give them the strength and the wisdom to make the right choices, Lord. Help them in this time of need. Lord, we thank you for this, your church, and we ask that you would enable us, empower us to do what you have called us to do. And Lord, that we would take up ourselves and get up and go and share. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Boy, it's been, it's been good to be with you tonight. Uh, it's been good to be with you, and thank you for letting me in your home and in your phone or your tablet or your TV. Uh, thank you for letting me be here with you this evening. Uh, I have a question that I ran across, and I really thought about it, and I thought, man, I don't know. I don't know, but then I found the answer. How many apples grow on a tree? How many? 
All of them. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I love you. God loves you more. God loves you most. Remember that as you go through the rest of this evening. And remember that as you go through the rest of this week. Also remember that you do matter to God and to us right here at the First Baptist Church of Winsboro. Stay tuned for some announcements. Thank you.